how did people before the flood live way longer than people after the flood? A while ago, some Bible-believing uh, scientists explored something called the canopy theory. Genesis 1-7 reads, And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. So it was suggested there had been a water canopy above the Earth's atmosphere, and that this canopy collapsed, causing 40 days and 40 nights of rain in Noah's flood. It was also suggested the canopy would have caused a worldwide greenhouse effect, with warm climate, lots of vegetation, and longer lifespans. Without the canopy, lifespans got much shorter after the flood. Now, now keep in mind, scientific uh, models come and go as far as you know, ideas are proposed, tested, and new discoveries are made. Uh, now, at CMI, we say hold to models lightly, but hold to Scripture tightly. That's right. You know, further research actually showed mm. such a canopy couldn't be more than two meters thick without basically cooking the earth. Mm. Uh, and that wouldn't hold near enough water for 40 days and 40 nights of rain. So there's science against the vapor can canopy model. And there's scripture against it as well. Psalm 148 verse 4 says, Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Indicating those waters were still in existence after the flood. Now, currently, most creation scientists favor flood models that don't involve a water canopy, such as catastrophic plate tectonics, which we talked about in episode three. Right, so long lifespans were not likely because of a favorable environment before the flood. But there was still a change in lifespans associated with the flood, as this graph shows. Noah lived for another 350 years after the flood, dying at uh, 950 years. Shem lived to be only 600 years. Only? <laughs> yeah, poor Shem. <laughs> His son, Arphaxad, lived to be 438. Uh, Peleg, 239. Abraham, 175, and so on. So what happened here? Again, we can look to genetics. As mutations accumulate, biological systems deteriorate. The population becomes less fit, less robust, less able to cope with diseases which affect lifespans. In his book, Genetic Entropy, Dr. John Sanford included a graph that he'd made using a computer program called Mendel's Accountant. He input an estimated number of mutations per generation in a population over the course of about 200 generations. And there's been about that many generations since the flood. The sloping red line represents the decline in overall fitness. Hmm. Looks a lot like the other graph, doesn't it? Hmm. It suggests mutations could be the culprit behind the drop in lifespans or a leading factor anyway. Now, we do know mutations cause everything in our bodies to wear out over time. Some of us know that better than others. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself, Grandpa. <laughs> okay, another contributing factor to shrinking lifespans, and this involves uh, genetics again, has to do with the cap on the ends of our chromosomes called telomere. Mm. It determines how many times a cell can divide before it dies. We could all live much longer if we had longer telomeres, and that may be the answer to why pre-flood generations did 